On November 30th, George H.W. Bush, the 41st president of the United States, passed away at the age of 94. Both Republicans and Democrats are lamenting this passing. And yes, if you read the title, I am suggesting that the only reason that the Democrats are upset is because Bush Sr. was against Donald Trump. And I can prove it anecdotally. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hey guys, welcome back as always to Heck Off Kami. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel down below so that every time I accuse a party of using someone's death for their own political gain, you can find out about it right away, right here. So when John McCain passed away in August, I had an idea for a video that was going to be titled John McCain and the Death of Bipartisanship that was essentially going to point out the hypocrisy behind all the leftists in the media crying about John McCain dying because it was the death of bipartisanship, despite the fact that they've made virtually no attempts at being bipartisan and are just bummed out that they're favorite rhino John McCain wasn't going to be there to maintain his 31% of votes in favor of liberty and or smaller government and the rest in favor of the left and big brother and or the expansion of the state. No one who actually follows politics and also identifies as a conservative was very pro John McCain, which is why it was funny to me. Uh, the left celebrates Barack Obama's 2008 victory as a huge landslide and, uh, you know, as a result of Obama, when in actuality it was likely a result of McCain just being a terrible candidate because he wasn't actually conservative, which is why so many large conservative pundits came out against him. Hillary Clinton. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I would have much preferred her as president and may have voted for her against John McCain. I think John McCain would have been worth, <laughs> how about this? I think John McCain would have been worse for the country than Barack Obama. And this is true with Bush Sr. too, as far as his allegiance to not necessarily the left, but the idea of larger government, the idea of a powerful Washington establishment. Now, we could talk about the Bush family with their habitual feeding of the military industrial complex, their drug running with the CIA, their contribution to the national debt, despite being fiscally conservative, and on and on and on, we could go for hours. But then again, I don't want to upset anyone that thinks that just because they wear the elephants that they are conservative or that they're our team. And, you know, here's a tip. Just look at the individual, uh, not the party affiliation, the Bushes and the Clintons, they're in the same league and the information is out there, you should look into it. So Bush Sr. is corrupt and his allegiance was to the expansion of the Washington establishment. The left is also entirely corrupt and their allegiance is to the expansion of the Washington establishment. Then along comes Donald J. Trump, a man who cannot be bought and has declared a cultural war on the Washington establishment. Drain the swamp, right? So you really think that they're all going to make nice together? Of course Bush was going to be against him, especially because he had low energy Jeb in the race too, and Jeb was supposed to get it too, but no one could predict the Donald being an absolute master of the media. This is a tough business oh, to run for oh, president. Oh, I know, you're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader that is pre Real principled. Tough. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting Jeb, yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at 3. So I'm never going to die alone. It's not a six-month son of so let's throw out some names. John Kasich, Suzanne Collins, Jeff Flake, Lisa Murkowski, John McCain, of course, uh, both, actually all three Bushes. What do they have in common? They're all members of the Republican Party and they all oppose the presidential campaign for Donald Trump. What else do they have in common? The Democrats love them. Here's some footage from before the Bushes and the uh, McCain came out against Trump, before they were granted immunity from progressive outrage. John McCain voted with the administration 95% of the time. So if he's the answer, the question must be ridiculous. John McCain is right. He doesn't understand the economy as well as he should. Of course, in order to be granted immunity from progressive onslaught, you must capitulate to the demands of the left because they control the media. Republicans are too often caught trying to relive the glory days of Reagan. They think that when the USSR collapsed, so did Marxism just because it was geographically disbanded for the most part. Like, no, guess what? They're still here. They're on your TVs, they're in your classrooms. This, this war is not over. It can be morning in America again, don't get me wrong, but we can't get lazy here, guys, because a lot of times we'll think that, well, they'll figure it out themselves and they get older. Like, yeah, statistically that's true, people become more conservative, but we can't just sit back and allow the culture to degrade into postmodern relativism and neo-Marxist ideology just because we so happen to have managed to avoid buying into the narrative. The war is still being fought. Anyways, Democrats have been so upset about Bush Sr. dying and also McCain, you would think their precious RBG passed away or something. Do you ever, like, how much they romanticize her? You know, they've got the t-shirts, the bumper stickers, like, 
just calm down a bit. And, well, you do the same with Trump, but like, yeah, the guy's president. He's got some good punchlines. Give me a break. I don't think any of you could even tell me what her voice sounds like, let alone a ruling of hers that you really liked in particular, except for maybe when she voted against killing that uh, that illegal immigrant that gang raped a 14 and a 16 year old girl. He bragged about having virgin blood on his underwear and then proceeded to strangle them to death with their shoelaces and then stomp on their necks until they were dead. And not only was killing him the correct legal interpretation of the laws that were being argued against in the appeals process, it was what he deserved to be frank and you can try and take the moral high ground all you want but the first time I read the details of that case uh Mandelin versus Texas for all of you I actually want to look it up I was numb for a good 10 minutes or so just imagining that happening to daughters or wives that I don't even have so any father or husband that claims that he wouldn't have wanted to see that man die is lying so uh both Bush and McCain are said to have voted for Hillary in 2016 like good well-behaved Republicans so uh, that's so condescending like they like to pretend that their worldview is the norm and anything that deviates from that is just obscure like no no it's not and they can do this because they control the media um, okay, so McCain and Bush voting for Clinton is not actually surprising because the three of them actually have very similar voting records. Um, hint, they swing left. The point is, even though Bush and McCain are being remembered as heroes and honorable men by the left, that isn't the way that the media regarded them before they went against Donald J. Trump, who is the true leviathan of the Democrat media complex. Donald J. Trump, by the way, was adored. He was absolutely adored by everyone in the media until 2015 when he announced his campaign for presidency. Just go back and watch the old interviews. They loved him. In 1992, the failing New York York Times wrote that Bush's economic policies were exasperating and his positions on individual rights is infuriating and is accused of, you know, stoking racial resentment of going to radical extremes and supporting right to life measures and said his capacity to govern has collapsed. Same thing happened to him that was happening to Trump is as well, when he nominated uh, Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court, that event, that farce, when they tried to smear Clarence Thomas, is actually the event that red-pilled Andrew Breitbart, who had always been a bohemian Californian liberal beforehand, fun fact. Uh, McCain, too, in 2000, when he ran against W, was labeled a brave hero by the New York Times, but then in 2008, when he won the nomination against Barack Obama, Times said McCain had retreated farther and farther to the fringe of American politics, running a campaign on partisan division, class warfare, and even hints of racism. His policies and worldview are mirrored in the past, so... Uh, it's not about consistency. It never has been. It's about which pawns can be used to assist in the overarching narrative. This is the way it's always been done. Do not be fooled. But so now after he dies bitterly going against Trump, he's praised for his adventurous bipartisanship. Yeah, the, the left only likes adventurous bipartisanship when it's for their agenda. Just ask Joe Manchin, who wasn't even being that adventurous. Why is it adventurous to be like, oh yeah, no, I mean, I guess no evidence. So I guess he's qualified. It seems more like, uh, I don't know, being childish. Let me clarify. There's nothing wrong with saying nice things about someone that has died. I'm not saying, excuse me, liberals. You can't say that you respect the life of John McCain now because you used to be mean to him before he died. I'm calling out the hypocrisy. I'm calling out using them when it's convenient to your narrative and then tossing them under the bus when it is inconvenient to your narrative. And it might even be relevant to, you know, post-death too, since they're now talking about when President Trump dies and how funny that funeral is going to be. I don't like Barack Obama. I didn't like Bush Sr. and McCain, but I acknowledge the significance of their careers and I respect them for that at least. I disagree with Obama on virtually everything, but he was still my president. When the president of the Philippines insulted Obama, I was offended by that because Obama was my president and I won't tolerate the disrespect of my president by another world leader. And you will never see that from the left because they don't believe in um, they don't believe in America. They don't believe in any unifying narratives or identities. The issue is that they're pretending for, uh, you know, the sake of the anti-Trump narrative that Bush and McCain were great men that were always admired, which is false. They hated them except for when they could use them. And in, in 2017, McCain and Bush Sr. couldn't possibly pose another threat to them. So what do they do? They use them. They use them to say, look at these Republicans, which is a very vague application of that definition, by the way. They don't like Trump. Trump is so bad that even the evil Republicans don't like them. McCain was fine with that. He was fine with being used for this narrative because Trump made it personal with McCain after the comments about the POW camps. And so McCain was fine with his legacy being that he stopped Trump's repeal of the ACA, even though he was very much in favor of free market health care for the rest of his career. In 2008, actually, his health care policies were described as the most radical free market focused health care, excuse me, policies in uh, recent decades. And it's sad. It really, it's sad. I understand it. Don't agree with it, but I understand it. I mean, Trump, he made it personal. Uh, and he paid the price for it politically because that really was the best chance of getting the ACA repealed. And McCain killed it. Bush, on the other hand, uh, with his allegiance to Clinton's and the big government, of course, he was going to be against Trump. But Trump never made it personal with Bush Sr. So even though Bush Sr. called him a blowhard, that rivalry wasn't as dramatic or petty. Um, but it was still useful ammunition for the Democrats and their anti-Trump war. I don't know. It's all pretty sad, to be honest with you. 
Uh, Trump isn't a trained politician. He hasn't been trained to speak or behave like a politician. I love that about him. It's arguably his greatest quality, but it also ultimately uh, ultimately leads to him burning some bridges, unfortunately. So rule of thumb, generally, if a leftist is uh, praising someone that's affiliated with the Republican Party, you should probably look into that individual because it's very likely that it isn't. it is politically motivated. That goes for both parties, I guess. But we just don't see a lot of adventurous bipartisanship from the left. So yeah, this whole thing is much less about mourning the loss of George Bush and also John McCain previously, and much more about building the coalition against Trump, which is effectively all anyone on the left has been doing for the last like two or three years. Hey guys, if you like this video, please click my face down there to subscribe, give me a thumbs up or whatever. Uh, go ahead and share this video with a liberal friend of yours who is lamenting the loss of Bush Sr. for the sake of virtue signaling. Thank you so much for watching as always, and may God bless America. It is almost Christmas. That is awesome.